So with that discussion, we have reached the end of promotions. And now we move on to rolling back deployments. Let me tell you a funny incident and a funny story about uh, Apple. Not Apple 130 rupees per kg, but uh, Apple one and a half lufi rupees for a phone Apple. Right? Apple has this particular software called Siri that they use. It's their personal assistant that they have. Right? Uh, Siri had this funny bug a few years back. If you ask Siri what is the best phone in the world, it would say, best not best fan in the, fan in the world, the best phone in the world, it would say that it was some Nokia phone. It, it, it's, it would specify some Nokia phone. I don't remember the exact name of the model, but it would say Nokia phone, a Nokia phone. The reason why Siri was doing this was because when you ask this question to Siri, it would go to Google and search. And maybe some reviewer would have probably said that this Nokia phone is the best phone and, the go and Siri would obviously read out that first result and say that this Nokia phone is the best phone in the world. This did not go down well with Apple, obviously. I mean, Apple wouldn't want its own device saying that uh, uh, a Nokia phone is the best phone in the world. And so this was a very funny bug that Apple accidentally pushed out. Then they had already rolled out Siri. Ro Siri was already out and people were using it. And this was a bug to them. So, so many so such uh, funny bugs and, such, and sometimes some very serious bugs also crop up once the product has been released right after release many bugs can come up and why is that so you see even if we're given a hundred years for testing we cannot say that uh, our system will be completely bug free we can never say that because we may not have tested the system in the right way we may not have tested for this particular bug. we may have bug debugged it we may have uh, performed a lot of testing but we did not look for the the actual bug that is there in the system you can test for so many years and still not be able to find all bugs it is not possible to build a perfect software the software that you build will most certainly have some untracked bugs that you could not find during deployment right you could not find them during your development process during your testing process during your uh, smoke test none of it you were not able to do that right for example maybe let's uh, consider this our, our example earlier example maybe the apple developers maybe they tested all kinds of things but they did not ask this specific question maybe they did not ask that specific question which is the best phone in the world and so they couldn't find that bug so uh, such things need to be fixed right what do you think apple did apple obviously uh, in their next update for siri what they did was they made siri stop saying that answer they stopped uh, letting siri say that uh, a nokia thing is the best phone in the world rather they started giving out a fabricated answer which is the best phone is the phone that is there in your hand at the moment that's what they said the phone with you if you if you have Siri, I think that's the answer that Siri gives even now also. I don't remember it. But uh, anyway, they fixed that particular bug by making Siri say that uh, the phone that you have with you at the moment, the phone that is there in your hand at the moment is the best phone in the world. Right? So just like that, companies will fix them. These bugs will need to be fixed. But how do we do it? That process of fixing the bug is important to us. Right? We are going to talk about that process whereby we take that software that is having the issues, right? Software with bugs, that software with bugs that we could not track during uh, development, we will take that software and then we will fix the bugs. We'll fix the bugs and get the software back to the user. How do we do this, right? What are the different strategies we can adopt to do this? And uh, Rollback essentially means this particular thing that I've explained, the process of taking a software that has already been deployed, performing maintenance on it and putting it back into production. Right? Sometimes, for example, a web application, assume that you have a banking software, assume that you have a banking software and in the banking software, there is a very serious bug whereby if you drop money into the software, it is not being updated into your account. Even if you transfer money, it is not being updated in your account. It's going, it's disappearing somewhere. This is a very serious bug. It needs to be fixed immediately. So what can we do? Right? We can stop this banking software from being available to users for a while. 
right and then we can fix it and then redeploy it fine this is one possibility however during the time that we have taken the software off the service will not be available right banking is a very critical service we cannot leave it uh, unavailable for a long time we cannot leave it unavailable till we uh, for one day or two days till we have fix this problem how can we deal with this right these are things that we are going to discuss about in uh, this chapter right okay you see when we are rolling back our software there are two two major concerns here right this is our software we are going to it is it has been working in production for some days let's say two weeks right it's been in production for two weeks which means we may have already created some data using the software right we may have already created some data using this software of us for example the banking software it may have already performed some successful transactions it may have performed some successful transactions right and then because of some reason a bug came about right a new bug came about i'll try and draw a bug i don't know how to draw a bug but yeah this is how a bug looks you see yeah a, a new bug has come up now it's a bug ridden software now we need to take it out of production so that we can fix it how do we how do we do this okay. um, now what are our concerns here our software has created some data and also the software may have interacted with many other libraries in the production environment right in the production environment the the software that we created may have already interacted with some of the libraries that were there in the system because obviously the software will have dependencies and some of the dependencies may be already present in our server right the server has some shared libraries right that there could be some shared libraries that your banking software is using and also some other software is also using this software is also using this service your service is also using this shared resource so when we take this out to fix our bug when we are going to take this out to fix our bug how will it affect the data what will happen to the data are we willing to make a compromise on the data if it is lost how do we back up this data what about the shared resources do we get rid of this or or do we um if if we have made some changes to the shared resource how do we restore the changes all those things are our primary concerns here so the shared resources and the data how do we handle shared resources and data when rolling back is our point of discussion in this section and we will see how we're going to do that in the upcoming sections right there are many strategies to deal with it uh, and uh, we will also need to see uh, something called downtime right we'll also need to discuss about this concept of downtime right yeah, which we will do in the upcoming sections see the simplest strategy that you can adopt when deploying your application is if this if the application has a bug then what can we do we, we can take it out of production fix it right and then make it available again once the error has been fixed but obviously this means that your your software will not be available for that 10 hours or 20 hours that you're spending for fixing your software so you have a downtime of you have a downtime of 10 hours now how can you how can you reduce this downtime a simple thing that you can do is a simple thing you can do is probably our we had a base version right we had a base version of our software we had a base version of our software and then we added a few features on top of it and then we released this particular version it is this version that has a lot of issues right the base version is fine the base version is working for perfectly fine but the extra features that we added to our base version is what is causing our issues so what we can do is we can reach out to our artifact repository and get back the base version and deploy our base version till the time we make our bug fixes right we will roll back to our base version while we are making the bug fixes version 1.1 is the one that has bugs what will we do we will roll back to version 1 make this available to our customers while we perform our bug fixing on version 1.1 once the bug fi bug fixing is fine what can we do we can redeploy i'm sorry we can uh, take out version 1 and then redeploy version 1.1 is that clear okay 
although it, it it seems like a very very good strategy to roll back to an older version there will still be some downtime right there will still be some downtime how you see to for our current version 1.1 we configured a system in a particular way right we created configurations for the production environment for version 1.1 however for version 1 the configurations may have been different right we need some time to reconfigure our system to uh, configuration 1 for version 1 when we roll back to version 1 from 1.1 we need to reconfigure our system with configurations 1 currently it is configured with version uh, configuration 1.1 we would need to configure it with configuration 1 right so uh, and uh, this will obviously take a little while maybe one hour or 10 minutes right it is still 10 minutes of downtime we have certainly reduced the downtime of 10 hours to 10 minutes but still we have a 10 minute downtime right uh, a 10 minute downtime or even a one second downtime can be very crucial in certain applications right for example you're making a, uh, a, a, a an airplane reservation right you're making an airplane reservation you filled out everything and when you submitted the application uh, there was a one a 10 second time right there was a 10 second downtime uh, where you were rolling back right assume it, it may be it will obviously be more than 10 seconds but assume that there's a 10 second ro uh, downtime this 10 second downtime will cause you to uh, will cause your particular booking to be cancelled right your booking cannot be complete because the server is not available so even a very small downtime can cause our system to uh, be uh, to be rendered useless right so uh, some of the disadvantages of this simple strategy are one it is obviously causing some downtime two we two there's the two the second issue is that since we are since version one we are taking taking version one version 1 1.1 completely out of production right version one has issues so we're taking it completely out of production we don't really have a proper idea of what caused the system to crash right something may have caused that uh, version 1.1 to crash we are taking it out of production and so we don't really have an exact idea of what happened we are taking the complete history out and is if it had it remained in production we could have tried it out in that product we could have tested it out in that production environment and uh, made few changes and tested it out in that production environment and tracked our tracked what happened what caused the bug to occur right what caused the bug to occur we could have tracked it up we could have examined the entire history in production itself right if if version one was in production itself we could have we could have tested it out in the production itself however we have taken it taken version 1 1.1 1 .1 out and we've replaced it with version 1 we've they changed the whole configuration and so we cannot do uh, the error debugging in production now right so it becomes difficult to debug your bug in production with this strategy similarly the third part is that it causes data loss right there may be some crucial data like the, it was there here but uh, because we uh, because of the fact that we have taken out without proper uh, backup plan this particular strategy may cause specific data loss issues right but we can address these issues to an extent for example the bug tracking issue we can obtain a complete dump of our production and probably then set up our uh, set up a production like environment in our company and then create the history in this production environment right take uh, from from the original production environment we'll create a complete uh, we'll take a use we'll take a log of everything that happened in that system and then we'll try and replicate that log in our production environment and then we can probably uh, um, use our a bug ridden version 1.1 in the production environment in our office and then we can try and uh, fix it but again it's very difficult it's not as easy as it looks it, it, it involves a lot of effort it involves a lot of logging we have to log for a long time right? such such issues will be there and so it is not a very convenient thing similarly data loss also we can back up and try to restore the data we can keep on backing up our data just in case and assuming that something good something bad could happen again it's not that easy 
but uh, these are the issues here it still has downtime it can lead to us not being able to track bugs in production and there could be data loss these are the issues with the simple strategy of rolling back to a previous version right okay so in the next slide we will talk about reducing this particular this first issue which is reducing zero down uh, i mean reducing downtime and we will use a strategy called a zero downtime to achieve this right 